Brad Smith, you are uh, General Counsel of Microsoft, Senior Vice President, also Chief uh, Compliance Officer. Uh, it's hard not to start with legal questions, if you may. Um, we've read a lot about your antitrust litigation that takes place on both sides of the Atlantic. And I was interested to know what are your views of why we have different outcomes, such different outcomes, and will new entrants uh, have any impact on the overall regulatory environment in your industry? Well, I think it's not entirely surprising to have different outcomes in different parts of the world. Um, different countries have different histories, different legal rules, different values, uh, and that's part of what makes international legal work so interesting. Uh, the results vary in different places. Uh, I do think that there are a couple of things that uh, the world tends to share. Um, one is that the law is constantly evolving to keep pace uh, with changes in technology, uh, as well as changes in the marketplace. Uh, as you mentioned, we have some new entrants uh, and will continue to have new entrants uh, in our industry. I think the bottom line uh, is that everybody has to adhere to the law. Uh, just as we needed to adapt uh, to new regulations when it came to a product like Windows, uh, undoubtedly, uh, other companies are going to face their share of challenges as their products continue to break new legal ground, so to speak. Let's continue on the legal front. You've also been involved in a, in a case where anti-piracy laws was invoked to basically to curtail the freedom of speech. So basically, we're looking at a situation where it's business versus human rights. That's a <clears throat> Uh, an interesting dilemma, and I was wondering how, how your company apprehend these sort of dilemmas. Well, we, we worked very hard uh, a few months ago when this issue arose in Russia uh, around anti-piracy laws and their potential implications for human rights. Uh, I think we have to recognize that while we are a business, we have an obligation to think about our impact, and we have an obligation to think uh, about human rights issues. Uh, when those issues arose, that's what we did. Uh, we made some changes very quickly um, so that we could provide li free licenses to our software uh, to NGOs in Russia, uh, as well as to smaller newspapers and, and media enterprises. Uh, this was all designed to ensure uh, that across a country with nine time zones, uh, even small groups would benefit from what we always intended, which was to provide them access to our software free of charge. Uh, but we clearly recognized we needed to make some changes in order for that to work effectively at such a large scale. Now let me uh, turn to a more sustainability question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a topic that, uh, that is being talked about a lot at the Institute. Um, how, what do you think is the most effective contribution uh, on the part of a multinational company like yours towards achieving the Millennium Development Goals? I, I think the most effective thing a company can do is find a way to align what it wants to do as a business with what it wants to do in terms of its broader philanthropic and uh, corporate social responsibility activities. Um, we've done a number of different things as a company, uh, but I think the single thing that illustrates that best uh, is the goal we set for ourselves in the year 2007. Uh, we said that by the year 2015, we wanted to reach a billion additional people and provide them with the skills needed to use technology. So we focused on doing this through schools, um, through different NGOs, uh, through other types of community centers, uh, and we're well on our way to meeting that goal. Um, that's the kind of thing that can put the global reach of a large company to good use, and I think it is especially sustainable, really, when you get down to it, uh, when a company like ours sees it as something that's closely connected to its broader mission as a company in the first place. And would you say that your cloud computing technology uh, help you in that regard? We're very enthused about what we think cloud computing can do, uh, really for people around the world in the future. Um, just as the uh, mobile phone in a region like Eastern Europe or India enabled some people to leapfrog, if you will, uh, existing landline telephone technology, cloud computing or computing offers some opportunities of, a, of the same sort. Um, so it, it offers the ability to make computing cheaper, 
Uh, it offers the ability to make use of the large infrastructure of data centers and, and put it to, to work for students, for consumers, for businesses. Um, so I, I do think it's going to help drive computing forward, and it is going to further enable all of us to use IT uh, as a tool for development. And when you enter new markets in the emerging, in emerging countries, how do you build trust in governments? I think um, one needs to enter a new market, and we've done this many times, and first be clear about what one is trying to accomplish. Be transparent about your goals. Um, and then go to work and hopefully show people that you're living up to your goals. Uh, for us as a company, when we go into a new market, actually the first thing we often focus on doing is training people. Uh, because we don't have the ability to service customers uh, unless there are business partners that have the skills to serve them. Uh, we work with 700,000 business partners, companies around the world, typically small and medium enterprises. And so if we can go into a country, um, we can talk about training, we can show the government that we're training people, uh, we talk about the legal framework that's needed to uh, help software and computing uh, become popular, uh, then hopefully we get to work and we show tangible benefits and we even create some jobs in that local economy, and then that starts to generate real momentum. Well, let me finish this with a bit of a personal question. You are the head of a, an army of young lawyers, some young, some a little bit older. I think you have a thousand in your mm -hmm. overall uh, group. Um, what sort of advice would you give uh, a young person uh, wanting to do an international legal career? Well, I would actually advise anybody who wants to pursue a legal career to pursue it with an eye towards an international legal career as well. Um, the truth is the world has become so small um, that most fields of the law now have an international dimension to it. And I think the people who are going to be able to contribute the most uh, are the individuals who are going to be able to work effectively across borders. Plus, I would say that it's the kind of thing that frankly just makes work and life a lot more interesting. You get to see how the same issue looks and feels to people from different backgrounds and different values and cultures. Uh, and it just opens oneself up uh, to learning lots of new things. Uh, I would definitely encourage uh, someone who's interested in an international legal career uh, to be prepared to let life take them in some unexpected directions. Uh, I think over time, a lot of the most exciting opportunities emerge in ways that are unexpected, and one needs to be ready to embrace them when that happens. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith, and we look forward to hearing you tonight. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here.